Hello friends. Uh, my name is Arun. I will create videos on Intune and SSM. So this video will be completely on uh, PXE right now. So I will tell you how can you enable and create the PXE infra for in your company and for any new office and any site you get. So creating PXE infra is not a uh, tough job. It is very easy or I will say it is a four step. It will include only four steps to create a PXE infra for in any organization. So before discussing the PXE infra, let me tell you a little bit of PXE process. I will not go in detail about the PXE process. You can check in the Microsoft. So let's start with the PXE process. <clears throat> so the PXE process will start with when you will uh, when you will perform a network boot using the LAN. When we are talking about PXC boot process, it means you are using a LAN to boot a to boot any device via the LAN. And how will you how will you boot a device via LAN? You will select the F12 option and then you will select the IPv4. So what a PXC boot process will do? When you press F12, it will send a broadcast message for your DSP and PXE role servers. So it actually perform DORA. You might know what is a DORA. It is a basic process in the DSP, three way and sec. So it will perform the DORA process and, after, and in the DORA process, what it will do? In the DORA, DORA process, it only do two things. It will first get the IP from the DSP server. Okay, so remember in the PXE boot process, the first thing your client will do is getting an IP. So this is the first job you need to do, to get IP from the DSP. After getting the IP, after getting the IP, the second thing it will do is to get the boot file location from our PXE server. And there are many things also happen in the middle of this. For this, you have to check the Microsoft site because I'm not discussing in detail. Okay. But th this is the basic PXE boot process. It is a basic process of PXE. A client will get IP, then it will get the boot file location from the PXE. So what all these three parties involved in this? One is client is involved. You need the client. Client means you need a device, then you need a DSP server, and then you need a PXE server. So we have three entities here. Device, DSP, and PXE server, or we can say DP server. Remember these three entities, it will be required to create an IP infra for any organization or for the new site. So you know the basic of PXE boot process now. And the log file to check all of this happening is the smspxe.log file. It will be created in your, where? It will be created in your uh, PXE server. All right. So, uh, so this is the basic PXE boot process. Now in the diagram, you see I have created two cases. One case, this is the first case. This is the second case. In the first case, you will see this is the single server, server A. But in the case two, I am using two different different servers. Why? Because in the case one, we have a single server because the PXC and the DSP role are on the same servers. So in your infra or might be in any infra, you will see this that your company is using a single server 
and dash single server have both the roles pxc and dsp both the roles are on the same server and in some of the company organization you will see that they they are using separate separate servers one server is for the dsp and one is for the pxc so you can see these two scenarios in any of the organization but this case one it is a very specific and unique case if you see any any if you see any server which is hosting both the roles so you need to do some uh, you need to do some different configuration on that server and what are the those configuration this one you need to create a registry you need to create a registry do not listen on dsp port equal to 1 okay you can find this registry in the microsoft blog also and if you want from me uh, just comment i will give you the complete path where you have to create this and second is you have to create a option system and where where it will be created it will be created in dsp scopes and remember this option system need to be created by ad team you just have to tell them that please create option 60 and what will be the value the value the value will be pxc client okay so always remember in the pxc if you are seeing that any server is hosting pxc and dsp on the same roles on the same server these two configurations are must if any of this configuration is miss your pxc won't work it will not work okay so these are compulsory only for case one but if you are going for the case two where you will see this is the common scenario actually case two where we have different different servers in this case you don't need these two configurations it is only and only required for the same server like in the diagram we don't have this configuration and the pxc boot process will be same it, you will perform network boot via f12 it will perform dora it will get ip and then it will get the client boot file location the pxc boot process will be same for both the cases all right so i have told you what is a pxc boot process i have told you what are the two scenarios of the pxc you can see in any of the companies these are the two scenarios only okay there is no other scenario you will find in any of the organization so now let's talk about how will you create a infra pxc infra suppose you are getting a new site and the measurement is asking you to enable the pxc how will you do it so that is simple what you need to do Mm -hmm. let me open it where it is first you need to create a boundary group using the ip of the client right you need to create a boundary group boundary group using client IP right it is the first step then you need to enable the pxc on the dp server okay make sure this dp server it is it is the same one which is falling under this boundary group and then you need to distribute your boot image okay so it will be the second option it will be the second step first we have created boundary group for the device and then we have enabled the pxc on that boundary group server and then we have distributed our boot image to that uh, boundary groups dp server 
now the third and the most important thing <coughs> which most of us uh, which most of us actually don't know that is the network configuration which will be done by the network team actually and we call it ip helpers you need to connect with the network team connect with your network team and ask them to create the ip helpers okay in the ip helpers what information you need to give okay this is the question you uh, this is the question that is coming in your mind right now so let me tell you what information you need to give to network team i have told you about two case right case one case two in the case one we have the single server right single server with pxc and dsp let me open that one yeah this is the case one where we have single server it means we have the single ip and this is the case two server b server c it means we have two different different ips and in the case one what you have to give to network team you have to give the ip you have to give the server ip in means you need to give here which ip you have to give here server a ip you have to give here server a ip okay and in this case this is the case too where we have separate separate servers so in need in this case you have to give ip of dsp server and pxc server it means you have to give you have to give server vip and server c ip okay so these are the ip helpers actually ip addresses are the ip helpers so you need to give the ip 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 address of your pxc server and the dsp server okay but remember this dsp server will be mostly added in the ip helper already okay it will be already there in the ip helper it will be already okay this will be already available there in the ip helper so what you need to provide only is pxc but you have to make sure you have to make sure that ip helper have the dsp server ip you have to make sure it okay now this second uh, second question is you have given the ip of your pxc server to the network team but they are asking they are asking that in which subnet it's this ip is need to be added correct they will ask you that you have given a ip but they will ask you that where they need to modify it where they need to do modification so you have to tell them and what you need to tell them is where the motivation will be done you need to tell them that at the ip helper in the client ip subnet okay and this client ip subnet is the ip of the client you need to ask the client that what is the ip config details or ask for the ip config slash all details of the client okay suppose 
uh, as example client given you ip of 1050.120.5 and when it will, when the client will share ip config slash all it will have the dsp server ip also right it will have the dsp server ip so you got the uh, you got the client ip and you got the like 10140.120.5 this is dsp ip so you got both these things and this bot information you will get from the client only now you need to tell the network team that please add the ip helpers to the subnet which subnet 10.150 i am using the same ip which user has given me and we have to do the same dot 120.0 so instead of using 5 simply use the 0 here and tell them to add the ip address which ip address your server ip address add this server ip address in this subnet and same you need to do here for the case 2 also you will give them in the case 2 you will give them two ip address please add the two ip address to the subnet one will be dsp and one will be the pxc okay so you have to just perform these three steps to enable the pxc on any or any of the new site if your three these three configuration are correct then your pxc will work without any problems hmm so if you have any questions regarding this simply comment on my video i will answer all of your questions Hmm. Hello. Bye-bye.